Hi guys, this is Step Up. So I wanted to share something the Lord has been working on me with because he's been revealing a lot of different things about the truth behind the uh, establishment of the land of Israel and the wrongs and injustice associated with that of how it came to be and the evil behind it that's fueling it. And it's all working up to ushering in the Antichrist. And we can see the truth in that. But I was struggling with it because it's a two-sided coin. And I'm trying to understand it's, you know, both sides have their rights and both sides have their wrongs. And it's just really confusing in general. And so I wanted to share with you guys more godly biblical insight to this. So I was asking Abba Yahuwah and our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you please reveal the truth to me. Oh, what's going on with this situation? What's right? What's wrong? And why is this happening? And then, you know, and what should I think of it further moving forward? And so God was revealing to me, speaking to my heart, saying, I said, uh, and I have done this before. I've done this before in scriptures. Search the scriptures and you will find um, what, I'm, what I am doing and come to understand why. So I was like, okay. And then he put the story of Jacob and Esau into my mind. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's what I got to go read. And after reading it, I understand a bit better what he's trying to do. But again, God's ways are higher than our ways. And he uses what is meant and purposed for evil for good. So all things work towards those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ, who are called according to his will. So this is about the salvation of many so that all Israel would be saved instead of fewer. So, um... It's really interesting how the Lord is working with this. Um, and so I wanted to share it with you, okay? And everything has its time and place and stages. So we're in this, the beginning of this process. So I'm going to read this to you and explain what the Lord is showing here about the land of Israel, the Palestinian conflict, um, how they stole it from them, how it's uh, rightfully the Palestinians, but God has given it to Israel in spite of that for his purpose to usher in the Antichrist and to um, bring about the final redemption of uh, the uh, the seed of Israel, the bloodline seed of Israel, into the fold of faith in Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, the only name that you can be saved by. For the word says that whoever does not believe on the Son, the one and living Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has already rejected the Father. So they do not have the Father if they do not have the Son. So, and anyone who refuses that the son is from the father is already an antichrist. So, you know, it's a complicated redemption process. And in fact, all those who will be saved will be those who convert to Christianity, who basically convert to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ more specifically and accurately to state. And so that is who will be saved in the tribulation, and that is also who will be beheaded in the tribulation. Um, Jews who reject Messiah will will not be beheaded in the tribulation. Uh, that is, Jews who reject Jesus will not be beheaded because they will, in fact, in, instead be a, accepting the Antichrist, right? So, and anyone who accepts the Antichrist will not accept Jesus Christ, and anyone who accepts Jesus Christ will not accept the Antichrist. So it's pretty evident, and that's why the word in the book of Revelation said that the, uh, the dragon will go after the remnant of the seed 
the woman's seed, which have the testimony of Jesus and who obey his commands. So you see, it's the saving faith in Jesus that the dragon doesn't want. And that's who he's going to be persecuting and given the right to overcome and um, destroy and so those are the foolish left behind from the safety and departure of the ark of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they're going to be coming to uh, a faithfulness and refinement through the fire at that time. But anyways, uh, I can explain that in another video. I just wanted to focus here on this, what the Lord is trying to reveal and how he's using wrongs and what is purpose for evil to bring about his will. Uh, which is the salvation of all Israel, of many, uh, coming to the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, his one and only begotten son, who he sent to die for us and our sins to redeem us from the earth onto himself as a one family in one spirit. Uh, so this goes back to the reflection and typology where Jacob steals Esau's blessings. So Jacob here represents... Um, the land of Israel, okay, uh, Jacob represents the Jewish people, um, an extent of the Jewish people, and Esau represents an extent of the Palestin the Palestinian people, um, the Arabs there, okay, and so this is what has happened. So in we see here in Genesis 2, 27, one day when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau, his older son, and said, my son, yes, father, Esau replied, I am an old man now, Isaac said, and I do not know when I may die. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows and go out into the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. And But Rebecca overheard what Isaac had said to his son Esau. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son, Jacob, listen, I overheard your father say to Esau, bring me some wild game and prepare me a delicious meal. And then I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me. Do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so that he can eat and bless you before he dies okay so but look Jacob replied to Rebecca my brother Esau is a hairy man and my skin is smooth what if my father touches me he'll see that I am trying to trick him and he'll curse me instead of blessing me but his mother replied let the curse fall on me my son just do what I tell you Go out and get the goats for me. Okay, so here, in a way, um, Rachel represents the USA helping Israel, Jacob, claim the inheritance of the land, the inheritance of his father. Okay, and so... Basically, Rachel said, let the curse go on me. So they're absolving, America will absolve the curses for um, the Jewish state, the land of, established land of Israel. And so they're the ones helping them. And you can see that very clearly. And historically, they're the ones helping them attain the, the fullness of the blessing of the land of Israel. Uh, Israel there okay the so Jacob went out and got the young goats for his mother Rebecca took them and prepared a delicious meal just the way Isaac liked it and then she took Esau's favorite clothes which were there in the house and gave them to her young son her younger son Jacob and she covered his arms and the smooth part of his neck 
with the skin of the young goats and then she gave jacob the delicious meal including freshly baked bed so jacob took the food to his father and my father he said yes my son isaac answered who are you esau or jacob sorry i meant sorry i meant to say rebecca i think i said rachel um jacob replied it's esau your firstborn son i've done as you told me here is the wild game now sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing isaac asked how did you find it so quickly my son the lord god put it in my path jacob replied then isaac said to jacob come closer so i can touch you and make sure that you are really esau so jacob went closer to his father and isaac touched him the voice is jacob's but the hands are esau's isaac said but he did not recognize jacob because jacob's hands felt hairy just like esau's so isaac prepared to bless jacob but are you really my son esau he asked yes i am jacob replied then isaac said now my son bring me the wild game let me eat it and then i will give you my blessing so jacob took the food to his father and isaac ate it and he also drank the wine that jacob served him and then isaac said to jacob please come a little closer and kiss me my son so jacob went over and kissed him and when isaac caught the smell of his clothes he was finally convinced and he blessed his son and said ah the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors which the lord has blessed from the dew of the heaven and the richness of the earth may god always give you abundant harvest of grain and bountiful new wine may many nations become your servants and may the bow thy bow down to you may, uh, sorry may they bow down to you may you be the master over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you all who curse you will be cursed and all who bless you will be blessed as soon as isaac had finished blessing jacob and almost before jacob had left his father esau returned from his hunt esau prepared a delicious meal and brought it to his father then he said sit up my father and eat my wild game so you can give me your blessing but isaac had asked him who are you esau replied it's your son your firstborn son esau isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said then who just served me wild game i have already eaten it and i blessed him just before you came and yes that blessing must stand when esau heard his father's words he let out a loud and bitter cry oh my father what about me bless me too he begged but isaac said your brother was here and he tricked me he has taken away your blessing esau exclaimed no wonder his name is jacob for now he has cheated me twice first he took my rights as a firstborn and now he has stolen my blessings oh haven't you saved even one blessing for me isaac said to esau i have made jacob your master and have declared that all his brothers will be servants be his servants i guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine what is left for me to give you my son esau pleaded but do you have only one blessing O oh, my father bless me too then esau broke down and wept finally his father isaac said to him you will live away from the richness of the earth and away from the dew of the heaven above but you will live by your sword and you will serve your brother but when you decide to break free you will shake his yoke from your neck jacob flees to pa padan aram from that time on esau hated jacob because their father had given jacob the blessing and esau began to scheme i will soon be mourning my father's death then i will kill my brother jacob but rebecca heard about esau's plans so she sent for jacob and told him listen esau is consoling himself by plotting to kill you 
So listen carefully, my son. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you have done to him, I will send for you to come back. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm sick and tired of these local Hittite women. I would rather die than see Jacob marry one of them. Okay. So this is the situation. Jacob steals Esau's blessings. So this is what Israel has done. A portion of the Jews have done to a portion of, you know, the Palestinians, the uh, a portion of the the uh, Arab people there. So they unjustly took that land for themselves. They unjustly took that blessing according to their own will, and America's helped them do it. They wouldn't have been able to do it without America's help. Just as Jacob wasn't able to do it without his mother's, Rebecca's help. And so they schemed against Esau. Okay. And they were successful. So they swindled the Arabs there of their blessing. But what has happened now is even though this is all according to the will of God because he purposes all things for good and even though this is a an, a wicked and evil act it is it, you know it is lying it is stealing and it, those things are forbidden and you know it is envy it is um um jealousy and all those things it is covetousness and all those things Jacob and a portion of the Jews have done are against the Ten Commandments against God's will and holy nature and so in a way God is not pleased with it but it is his perfect plan that he is allowed to come to pass because he has a greater cause to use this to save the bloodline remnant of some of the Jews that will be left who in the tribulation who will come to faith in the Lord Jesus. So I'll explain this. It continues on and it talks about the negotiations and a type of covenant between Jacob and Esau. So in Genesis 32, as Jacob started on his way again, angels of God came to meet him. And when Jacob saw them, he exclaimed, this is God's camp. So he named the place Mahanim. Jacob sends gifts to Esau. Then Jacob sent messengers ahead to his brother Esau, who was living in the region of Seir, in the land of Edom. He told them, give this message to my master Esau, humble greetings from your servant Jacob. And so now, after they've completely absorbed the, um, after Jacob, Israel's completely absorbed Esau's, the Arab's blessing in the land there, now they are trying to make an agreement, they're trying to come to a peace agreement so that it will not lead to war, basically, and lead to the destruction of them, okay, because they have done a wrong thing. So now they're trying to um, right their wrongs so that they can live in peace. 
And so Jacob's trying to right his wrongs so that he can live in peace with his brother, Esau. And so here he uses gift offerings as a peace agreement so that they can come to uh, unity. And so here you see Jacob actually is submitting himself now to Esau. Okay, Jacob says, he says, tell them, give this message to my, my master Esau. So now Jacob is calling him his master. He says, humble greetings from your servant, Jacob. And now he's saying, I will serve you. Jacob's saying, I will serve you, Esau. Until now I have been living with Uncle Laban, and now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks, and sheep, and goats. And my servants, both men and women, I have sent these messengers to inform my Lord of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly to me. So again, this is the searching of peace, with peace offering gifts, and a type of covenant to seek peace between that Jacob is offering to Esau to uh, justify or neutralize his wrongs okay so the fact that he's submitting now Jacob is submitting now to Esau and calling him master master is showing you how the Jews will come to call the Assyrian master master lord lord I, and they will call themselves his servants. So they will call the Assyrian their Messiah. And this is how they receive the Antichrist. So it comes from this peace offering, this peace agreement. So here it's in the word. And so the Lord's showing me that even though this is all wrong, he's using it for his good because it's going to bring all peoples, including the Jews, to submission to the Antichrist so that they will put, the Antichrist will put them in their place and humble them before the Lord so that some of them will see that they, this is not their Messiah. So after dealing the message, after delivering the message, the messengers returned to Jacob and reported, we met your brother Esau, and he is already on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. Jacob was terrified at the news. He divided his household along with the flocks, and herds and camels into two groups. He thought if Esau meets one group and attacks it, perhaps the other group can escape. So, you know, ever since uh, Israel, you know, a portion of the Jews stole the land, ever since that happened, and America helped them to make that happen, ever since that happened, there's been a constant co conflict between um, the Palestinian Arabs there versus uh, the Jewish Israelis there. So we see that. So if Esau meets... Okay, so then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, you told me return to your own land and to your relatives and you promised me. So see, this is the Jews who were pushed out into exile and scattered all along over the world. And it was as a punishment for, you know, their sins and idolatry and rejecting their Lord Jesus. And they were scattered and, and their Messiah at the time. And now their God is saying it is time to go back. And even though, it's wrong. It's all done wrong and done in evil and done for the purpose of ushering the Antichrist. The Lord's saying, it's my will because I'm going to use it and my ways are not your ways. 
so I will treat you kindly. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown to me, your servant. So this is what Jacob is saying to God. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owed nothing except a walking stick. And now my household fills two large camps. So by divine providence, the Jews have increased in wealth and all this prosperity and all this positioning of power. O oh Lord, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me along with my wives and children, but you promised me I will surely treat you kindly and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the shores to many to count. Jacob stayed where he was for the night and then he selected these gifts from his possessions to present to his brothers Esau, 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. And he divided these animals into herds and assigned each uh, to a different servant. Then he told his servants, go ahead of me with these animals, but keep some distance between the herds. He gave these instructions to the men leading the first group. When my brother Esau meets you, he will ask, whose servant are you? Where are you going? Who owns these animals? You must reply, they belong to your servant Jacob, but they are a gift for his master Esau. Look, he is coming right behind us. So these are the constant, uh, you know, efforts of the peace agreement between Jacob and Esau, which is Israel and the Arabs there. So Jacob gave the same instructions to the second and third herdsmen and to all who followed behind the herds. You must say the same thing to Esau when you meet him. And be sure to say, look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. Jacob thought, I will try to appease him by sending gifts ahead of me. And when I see him in person, perhaps he will be friendly to me. So the gifts were sent on ahead while Jacob himself spent that night in the camp. And then that's when Jacob wrestles with God. So we see that Jacob is now submitting to the Assyrian, calling him Lord, okay, calling him his master. They've uh, seeking peace with the Esau, right? Israel seeking peace with Esau. And now Jacob will wrestle with God. So now, finally, Jacob is in the beginning of process of recognizing coming, God is working on him to recognize who is true Messiah is. So Jacob wrestles with God. During the night, Jacob got up to took, take and took his two wives, his two servants and his 11 sons and crossed the Jabok River with them. After taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. And when the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. And then the man said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name? The man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel, and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. Even today, 
the people of Israel don't eat the tendon near the hip socket because of what happened that night when the man strained the tendon on Jacob's hip. Okay, so that's where God is starting to use the situation to work with the Jewish people. And they start to recognize that their Messiah is coming and who the Messiah really is. And here Jacob and Esau make peace. So then Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. So he divided his children among Lay, Rachel, and his two servant wives. He put the servant wives and their children at the front, Lay and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph last. And then Jacob went on ahead. As he approached his brother, he bowed to the ground seven times before him. So he's bowing to the Assyrian. Esau represents also the Assyrian, the Antichrist, and his people. And see, Israel is now bowing. This portion of the Jews is now bowing down to their worshipping the Assyrian. And this is when they'll you know, believe that he is their Messiah. They'll come to accept it through, you know, through this peace agreement. Okay, this peace offering. It's a cup. So this is, it's just really interesting how the Lord was telling me that he's done this before. And that even though it seems wrong and there's evil things happening and evil men behind this purpose or evil spirits behind this purpose that he's going to use all this wrong towards saving all of Israel, saving everyone. And so this is, it's going to be a process where he will use what is evil for good. And so then Esau looked at the women and children and asked, Who are these people with you? These are the children God has graciously given to me, your servant, Jacob replied. Then the servants' wives came forward with their children and bowed before him. So this is all the world now coming to bow before the um, Assyrian, the Antichrist, the pseudo-Messiah. Next came Lay with her children and they bowed before him again, worshiping the beast. Finally, Joseph and Rachel came forward and bowed before him. And what were all the flocks and herds I met as I, come, as I came? Esau asked. Jacob replied, they are a gift to my Lord to ensure your friendship. My brother, I have plenty, Esau answered. Keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob insisted, no, I have found favor with you. Please accept this gift from me. And what a relief to see your fr friendly smile. So this is a, a false piece, right? And so it's, you know, it's going to be very short-lived. It is like seeing a face of God, the face of God. So here's the insight. He says, what a relief to see your friendly smile. It is like seeing the face of God. So this is where they um, recognize the Assyrian Antichrist, Pseudo-Christ, as Messiah, their God. Their expected Messiah and God. Okay. And so please take this gift I have brought to you. Okay. So they will offer him sacrifices then. For God has been very gracious to me. I have more than enough. And because Jacob insisted, Esau finally accepted the gift. So, well, Esau said, let's be going. I will lead the way. But Jacob replied, you can see, my Lord, that some of the children are very young and the flocks and the herds have their young too. If they are driven too hard, even for one day, all the animals could die. Please, my Lord, go ahead of your servant. We will follow slowly at a pace that is comfortable for the livestock and the children. I will meet you at Seir. All right, Esau said, but at least let me 
assign some of my men to guide to protect you. Jacob responded, that's not necessary. It's enough that you've received me warmly, my Lord. Okay. And so, so now um, the Assyrian is in charge of the armies. Okay. He has control. Uh, Jacob responded, that's not necessary. Uh, it's just, okay. So Esau turned around and started back to Seir the same day. Jacob, on the other hand, traveled to, on to Sukkoth. So he didn't go to the same place. There he built himself a house and made shelters for his livestock. That is why the place was named Sukkoth, which means shelters. Okay, so now this is the timing where the Antichrist has been revealed and has come to the fullness of his power. And now Jacob, Israel, is re they, after bowing down to him, revealing this and, you know, calling him God and revealing he's God and realizing he has power, he has the army and everything, power for the world, then they go, oh, we shouldn't follow him. We shouldn't stay in the same place where he is. And so they depart and they go away to the wilderness, which means they go and um, Sukkot, which is shelters, which is tabernacle, just as the um, the Israel, Israelites tabler, tabernacled for 40 years in the wilderness at the timing of the exodus, exodus with Mo, Moses. So again, this is the that representation that they will, the warning is that, you know, do not, when you see um, the abom abomination of desolation, you know, which is him calling him uh, the Antichrist Assyrian, calling himself God, you know, and taking the throne of God, basically, claiming to be God in, uh, on the throne of God, therefore, you know, they the word says that you should flee to the mountains, don't turn back to get anything, and just flee to the mountains. So now, finally, Jacob is seeing that he shouldn't follow to the same place, and that he needs to tabernacle in um, the wilderness. And so, later having traveled all the way from Padan Aram, Jacob arrives safely at the town of Shem. Uh, she Shechem in the land of Canaan there he set up camp outside the town Jacob brought the plot of the land where he camped from the family of Ham ha Hamor the father of she Shechem for 100 pieces of silver and there he built an altar and named it El Elo Elohi Israel okay so that's when they worship the the true Messiah and they actually come to faith there in will in the wilderness they come to the saving faith of the real el the real is uh, god of israel which is our lord and savior jesus christ so that's how all will be saved in the tribulation period but i wanted to share this with you because um the lord jesus and abiyah were working on this with me uh, explaining to me this complicated process that even though his, uh, you know, a portion of the Jewish people are allowing allowing evil spirits and evil men to um, con them into this um, establishing of Israel to steal the land and make it their own so that they can usher in the... Um, this is all to usher in the um, Assyrian Antichrist over them so that eventually it will break their them into submission so that they realize they're in the uh, wrong standing. They're worshiping idols and that, in fact, they need to uh, seek out the true and living Savior, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, which they will find afterwards through this great testing at the time of tribulation. So I hope that I explained that well enough. Uh, I think it's important for you to study it out further if you're not receiving the revelation, the full revelation of it, and to definitely pray on it because I could not 
I could not for the life of me understand what God was doing with this situation and this injustice and all this, these truths that he was showing me and uncovering of this, this evil and the plans and uh, of the antichrist and what they're doing and how they're doing it. And he's saying, don't worry because I'm using it to save all of Israel, to save the many so that they will come to faith, true faith in me, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, he said, so yeah, he's going to use, and this is why it's in the word. This is why it's prophesied in the word. Um, that when we see the fig tree, um, the blossoming of the fig tree, um, this generation shall not pass. We know that it is nigh, our redemption is nigh, um, and the end of the, end of the age is nigh. And so, yeah, so this is amazing. And I hope this blesses you and encourages you and helps clear things up for you, just as it has me. And so the Lord wants everyone to be saved under the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Whoever receives the Son has received the Father, and whoever has not received the, the Son has already uh, rejected the Father. So they're, just, they're already lost, okay? So there's only one way to be saved for all time. And that is the everlasting covenant that the Lord Jesus Christ confirmed and renewed that and is now the new covenant, which is still the covenant of faith. He confirmed and renewed with Abraham, but it has become our new covenant of grace. OK, so this is the same way that we need to be saved, which is in the in the faith of our and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us. That was Emmanuel. He came to die for our sins on the cross to bear our iniquities. If we only accept his sacrifice and his kingship. Okay. So he is our master. And we call no other man our master. Okay. He is the only one worthy of our service. So this day we need to choose whom we serve. Because the time is near, the kingdom of God is at hand, it's nearer than we once perceived, and all these things are coming to pass right before our eyes. Prophecy is being rapidly fulfilled, and this is where we stand at the end of time. And so we see the covenant with many being confirmed and um, peddled out. It's a peace offering between Esau and Jacob, uh, Jacob, Israel towards Esau. Um, so that will be what will bring forth the Assyrian over them to rule them as, as their Messiah claiming to be God. And so that will bring them into the submission and break them, the Jews, the remnant of the Jews there, the true bloodline of Israel. It will bring them into submission to wrestle with God and come to see that he is, uh, the Assyrian is not their Messiah that they've been waiting for. In fact, that they've rejected their Messiah from the beginning, you know, and they will mourn on the fact that they have. And they will come to saving faith and call out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay. Which will be our Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no other name given to which men can be saved. May the peace of Christ be with you and all your own. Amen.